you remember this object that we were talking about in a recent video? Looking at it again, maybe you want to try it again, but this time I want to try it bigger. I'd like to thank KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. There'll be more about that in a little bit. Over here on this side of the shop, I have an air filter. And underneath the air filter is where I keep my magnets. This stack of neodymium magnets is what we use to make that spike. So I bought a new magnet, and it's pretty strong. Don't remember what its pull force is, which is admittedly a little scary just because of the amount of metal surfaces in my shop. I mean, just walking with it in my hand by my table saw or my welding table, it, it would literally be ripped out of my hand. You might say that is a ridiculous thing to say, but there is a reason that this is the second one of these that I've purchased. With that little safety note divulged, let's move forward. For the resin today, we're gonna to be using Total Boat's Thick Set Resin. The recommended maximum for this resin is one to two inches. We're going to at least double that. If it fails, it's not their fault. This resin is a three to one resin. We're going to add just under 500 milliliters of part A, part B to 650 milliliters, or 16.25 ounces, and then we're gonna fill it up to 22 ounces. For this type of resin, I always enjoy it. It starts off very opaque, and as you stir it, you will notice it starts to change to a clear substance. Why am I not wearing gloves? I do not want resin on my fingers. All right, that looks pretty darn good. So we want it really, really light. So I'm, I mean, you can always add more, but you can't, you know what I'm gonna say. Everybody says the same thing. Three drops, let's see what that looks like. That's super light, it's still really transparent. I'm gonna do one more drop. Yeah, it's definitely yellow. That's a really pretty color. Very light, very happy. One more drop. What am I doing? Why am I adding another drop? Feels necessary. Put our lemonade to that side. Okay, here's the fun part. The more I'm thinking about this, the more it's terrifying me. Because basically, I'm going to take a magnet like this. I'm going to put it under here. We're going to pour shavings in there and make a huge blossom. And then I'm going to bring this whole thing over to this metal lined tin. I mean, how am I gonna keep it from like grabbing the edges here? Yeah, this is ah! I probably should have thought of this before mixing the resin. Inside my pressure pot, I've got a wooden disc because the bottom is rounded. So I'm gonna put a steel washer here. I'm gonna put the disc on top of it. I'm gonna put this metal magnet on top of that and I'm going to put this on top of oh it's got a little nubbin this is going to be perfect next step iron filings and we're just we're literally just going to pour them in see how it looks like an old man's comb over that's because of the way that the magnet is facing and if I was to shift this 90 degrees see how i get a blossom now so let's do this take two yes spikes i want it all the way around all right so i'm going to flip the whole thing upside down to try to get those spikes as high and spiky as possible and then we're going to pour in some resin Guys, why isn't somebody thinking about these things before we actually get to the point of doing these things? How are we going to get the resin on there without smashing all the spikes? Look at that. And you see all the air bubbles coming out of there? Those are all air bubbles that are trapped inside the iron shavings. I mean, I guess if it goes south, it'll look really cool on camera. Hopefully it doesn't hurt my fingers when it does it. So I'm just going to go straight down 
Oh, please. Nothing bad happened. See? <laughs> I knew it was fine. We knew it was fine. I knew. I knew it was fine. I'd like to talk to you today about KiwiCo. I'm going to guess that many of you watching are either makers or interested in making. So they offer eight different subscription lines, catering to different groups and different topics. They sent me out the Eureka kit as well as the Tinker crate. For each project, all the parts you need are included in the crate. And the included booklet also gives interesting facts and science behind the project itself. KiwiCo believes that making can actually teach skills like innovation, creativity, and problem solving to kids today, which will lead them down a path of world-changing ideas tomorrow. This kit has everything from following simple directions to actually wiring up a breadboard. KiwiCo's monthly subscription service offers projects that are designed to expose kids to the different concepts in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So there you have it, not only a fun way to spend an afternoon, but your kids might actually learn something. Viewers of the show get 50% off the first month of any crate simply by going to kiwico.com forward slash Peter Brown. There'll also be a link down in the description. I don't see any bubbles. That is a good thing. Um, and it definitely looks like the spikes are intact. It's insanely heavy. I think this could be cool. It has been a long time since I've turned a sphere, and I have never turned a resin sphere, and I've never turned iron shavings. So there's a lot of things going on here that could make this very complicated. I'm gonna be using my easy wood tools because I think they'll have the best chance of getting through this iron. What I've done is I've taken a piece of cardboard here and cut out a three inch half circle and that will help me get the shape of this. This side cuts so nicely with just the resin, and this side is actually really hard to cut through with the iron shavings. So you have to vary your pressure back and forth. All right, I'm definitely getting a roundish shape, um, and I think that that's it's much more spherical. Obviously got rid of a lot of material here. So I bought a set of cup drives. And one of them is, one of them goes in the headstock, the one that doesn't turn freely. That goes in this side. And then this one that turns goes in the tailstock. Like that, I think. Yeah. Theory is, while you're turning, everything that's not sphere shaped will appear as this ghosted image. And all I'm gonna do is just knock all of that ghosted image away until it all starts to look symmetrical. You can see these ridges that I'm getting, and that's because I'm pushing harder to get through these iron shavings, and then it kind of cuts more deeply in the resin. And so I think, I think I'm just gonna be making it worse and worse. And so I'm gonna switch over to sandpaper and try to smooth it all out into a uniform looking shape.
I'm starting with 120 and in a lot of ways I'm actually going to be shaping this. It allows me to make a more even pressure over the entire piece than I'm getting with my tools. I can just sort of push evenly rather than having the tools kind of bounce over the iron and then get gouged into the resin. Look at that, just with a small amount of sanding at 120 grit, that is definitely becoming much more sphere shaped. Definitely it's a little slower with sanding because you have to stop and rotate this. All right, and now the last three grits will do wet, uh, which is 400, 600, 800. That's all you're doing when you're sanding, is you're just trying to remove the scratches from the last grit until you get to a point where those scratches are so small you can't actually see them. And we'll move on to the micro mesh. Micro mesh are my favorite polishing pads. They start at 1500 and go through to 12,000. This is, this is kind of fun. I don't think I've ever polished iron shavings before. No, I know that. I, I don't have to pretend. I've never polished iron shavings before. And just like everything, by the time I get close to the end, I actually start getting really good at the process. So I've got the process down now. And um, we're almost done. <laughs> and the final pad, 12,000. Micro mesh is their own grit system. These don't correspond to actual grits, but if you go through the pads, you get a really nice finish. Apparently I didn't say that the last time I used this and people got pretty unhappy with me. So I guess even though you've heard it before, you want to hear it again. I'm definitely happy with the way this came out. There's a depth to it that the longer you look at it, the more interesting it becomes. It's been a long time since I've turned a sphere and I've never turned a resin sphere. And I have to say it is both a difficult and enjoyable process. It's very heavy, it's got a nice weight to it. Knowing that this was created simply by magnetic force and iron shavings and being able to see those without the magnet in place, it's exactly what I was hoping for. It is definitely what I hope to accomplish and I'm super happy with the way it ended up. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. You will find a lot more content very similar to this and you won't miss future projects as they come out.